All right, ladies and gentlemen, so it is time to finally get started on actually doing some problems. Um, forget about all the theory and the rules and the properties on stuff. Let's actually do some problems. So um, again, in this video, we're going to simplify rational expressions by using the rules of exponents. Now, the main important thing, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through four examples. And you know, on this very basic example, basically what we do is when we see a rational expression, the main important thing that I want you guys to see is that we see that everything is separated by multiplication. So therefore, I'm going to break up this problem into to 18 over 9 times x to the seventh divided by x squared. I'm not really changing the property. I'm just rewriting it in the form. And the reason why I like to do this is because then it kind of tell it helps me um, separate the numbers and the variables. So in the numbers, what I'm simply doing is just you know simplifying this fraction. I have 18 divided by 9, which is really meaning how many times does 9 go into 18? Well, I can just simplify that to 2. For the case of rational expressions, though, we're going to write 2 as 2 over 1, so that we know that the 2 is in the numerator and the 1 is in the denominator. Now, by using the rules of exponents, um, I have x to the 7th over x squared, so I'm going to use the quotient property, which is going to tell me to do x to the 7th minus 2. So I'm going to be subtracting them, which is going to leave me with 2, um, 2 over 1, which is, and x to the 7th minus 2 is going to leave me with x to the 5th. Now, those are both going to be in the numerator. So therefore, we don't really need to rewrite them over 1. So I'll just rewrite my finalized answer as 2x to the fifth. Now let's go over in this example. And as you can see over here, you got those. Now you can go and see in this example, now I have x's and I have y's. But you're going to apply the same operation. Um, you don't have to break them apart in this case. But I, I kind of like to, again, as we're getting started with this, is to break them apart so I know which rules of exponents I am going to apply here. So I have y to the fourth over y squared. Now again, now in this case, this is what trips up a lot of students, is they, they see over here, oh, 9 goes into 15. And they say, oh, well, 5 goes into 15. But remember, that's not, this, that's not what this one is saying. This is saying 5 divided by 15. Or how many times does 15 go into 5? Well, 15 is larger than 5, so it doesn't, doesn't evenly divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to simplify this. And by simplifying, basically what we're doing, just like I say, you know, 4 halves is the same thing as um, what is, I'm sorry, 2 fourths is the same thing as 1 half. And the reason why we can do that is we, as long as we divide the same number in the numerator and the denominator, we are keeping an equivalent fraction. So I look at this fraction, and since 15 doesn't divide into 5, I say, all right, well, is there a number that divides evenly into the numerator and the denominator? And that number in this case is 5. So if I divide the top by 5, I get 1. If I divide the top denominator by 5, I get 3. So 5 15ths can be reduced down to 1 third. Now I apply the rules exponents so over here. So I have x to the 3 minus 9. And here I have y to the 4th minus 2. Now if you remember my video on rules of exponents with negative exponents, it's very important to understand that um, how to rewrite a negative, negative exponent um, in your um, negative exponent as a positive. So I'll have 1 x 1 third times, now these are going to be in the numerator when we write them. So that's going to be x to the negative 6. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. And this is going to be y to the second. And as I remembered when dealing with negative exponents, to rewrite a negative exponent as a positive, we're going to rewrite it in the num in the, in its, as its reciprocal. So my final answer would be 1 times y squared, which is just y squared, all over 3 times now x to the positive sixth power. Again, that's going to be dealing with your why this is in the denominator. Again, goes through my rules of negative exponents. So if you have more questions on that, please make sure you go back to that video just to make sure you have a full understanding. Now in this case, this one gets a little bit trickier because you can see now the a's and the b's are not aligned. Well, fear not. We can just simply align them. Since it's multiplication, we can just rearrange them any way we want to. Just like 2 times 4 is, four time, uh, is the same as 4 times 2, we can just rearrange b squared times a cubed as a cubed times b squared. So I'm just going to rewrite it. Ah, got to rewrite those, switch them, right? OK. So now in this case, again, we are going to uh, simplify this. Now in this case, though, 14 does not evenly divide into 21. So I want to look to see if, well, can I reduce these? Is there a number that divides into both of them? And yes, a number that divides into both of them is 7. 7 divides into 21 three times, and 7 divides into 14. Two. So 21 over 14 can be reduced to 3 halves. Now, over here, I have a to the 3 minus 3 and b to the 1, because there's a 1 up there if we don't have anything listed, minus 2. Again, those are all written in as in your numerator. So I, then I have 3 halves. Well, a to the 3 minus 3 is going to be a to the 0 power. 
and then b to the negative first. Now remember, anything raised to the 0 power is just going to be 1. And b to the negative first, just like we had over here, if it's negative in the numerator, to rewrite it as positive, we're going to need to put it in the denominator. So therefore, my final answer is going to be 3 times 1, which is a to 0. So that's just going to be 3 over 2 b to the first power. But we're not going to write the 1 up there, so we'll just leave it as 3 over 2b. All right, um, in the, my last example, you can see I have negative exponents already. right? Um, so there's a couple different ways you can do this. We can automatically make our exponents positive by putting this um, n to the negative 3 down in the denominator and the m to the negative second back in the numerator. Um, or we can simply just apply the quotient property already with them being negative. Now, I don't like dealing with negative numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite them so they are all positive. So I'll have um, m squared times m to the seventh all over n squared times n cubed. Remember, to make my negative exponents positive, I just put them in um, as the reciprocal. So if they're in the denominator negative, I put them in the numerator. If in the numerator negative, I put them in the denominator. Now, um, I can't use the quotient property because the same bases are not in the numerator and denominator. So I can apply the pro um, product property, or I'm sorry. Yes, the product property. So what the product property states, oops, before I even get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and simplify 8 twelfths. Again, in this example, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 12 does not go into 8. However, we can reduce 8 twelfths. So we want to think of a number that divides evenly into 8 as well as in 12. And that number, uh, the largest number, is going to be 4. Even though 2 does divide into 8 and 12, if we divide by 2, we'd have um, 4, 6, which could be reduced further, again, by dividing by 2. So you always want to choose your largest number, which is 4. So if I divide 8 by 4, I get 2. If I do 12 divided by 4, I get 3. So therefore, 8 twelfths is reduced to 2 thirds. Now, I can't use the quotient property like I did before because I don't have m and m's in the, uh, m and m's in the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to apply the product property, which tells me to, when I multiply two exponents with the same base, I am going to add their powers. Okay. So now I have um, 2 to the m to the 2 plus 7 is going to be 9, all over 3 to the 2 plus 3 is going to be n to the fifth. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just your basic little overview of simplifying rational expressions by applying the rules of exponents. Thanks.